when it comes to providing facility solutions and maintenance support to the industrial and railroad industries as well as port and inland terminals and Department of Defense operations. Nobody does it better than Air Production and Service Inc. At APS, our team is dedicated to providing high quality service, parts and equipment for your air production systems. Whether you are in need of air compressor products or services, you can turn to our team with confidence. We have offices located in Jacksonville, Florida, Corbin, Kentucky, Pembroke, North Carolina and Spencer, West Virginia to expand our reach and make it easier for you to get the help you need with minimal weight or frustration. Contact us today to learn more about the different types of services and products we offer. Contact your local APS representatives, Mike and Michelle Spears in Spencer, West Virginia at 304-927-2550. Proud supporter of all Roan County Athletics. This is XYZ Insurance. How can I help? I have a question about my home policy. Okay, question about phone policy. Home policy. Okay, no policy. H-O-M-E, home. Technology is great, but sometimes it's better to talk with a real person. With Erie Insurance, you have a caring, independent agent who's with you from beginning to end. We don't have any H-O-M-E's on record. Your Erie agent in Spencer is Ashley Insurance. Get a quote today at ashleyinsurance.com. Go to erieinsurance.com for company licensure and product details. It's a very, very, very fine house. This is Jennifer Board Nichols at Board de Pew Realty. So many things have changed around us lately, and we are all concerned about what the future holds. During these uncertain times, we want you to know that one thing will not change, and that's the service and the professionalism we will offer you at Board de Pew Realty. My grandmother started this company over 64 years ago, and one thing hasn't changed. If you use Board de Pew Realty to buy or sell your home, you are guaranteed to receive service that is guided by principles like honesty and wisdom and a conscience. Owning a home is the American dream, and that hasn't changed. So let Board de Pew Realty show you the way to that dream. Even if the times are changing, principles and service shouldn't. So let Board de Pew Realty show you that some things remain the same. It's a very, very, very fine house. I'm Circuit Judge Anita Harold Ashley, and I'm proud to sponsor this ad supporting the Roan County Raiders. I've spent a lot of time participating in sporting events in my lifetime as a player, a Raider parent, and a fan. I've observed there are lots of ways people enjoy the games. It might be like my dad who quietly studied the game to catch stats, or my dear mom who gained a reputation for yelling at the refs. Or the fan may be there primarily to enjoy the band or the cheerleaders. But it's clear, we're all rooting for the Raiders. Let's win. Paid for by the Committee to Re-elect Judge Anita Harold Ashley, Kate J. Burbank, Treasurer. This message comes to you courtesy of Brandon Dental, located on Hospital Drive in Spencer, West Virginia. Soda pop consumption has been linked to a number of health issues, including obesity, diabetes, and osteoporosis. And it's no secret that soda pop can cause tooth decay. The sugar combines with bacteria in the mouth and forms a strong acid that attacks tooth and end. By limiting or eliminating your consumption of soda pop and other sugary drinks, as well as brushing twice a day and flossing once a day, you can significantly reduce your risk of cavities. Call Brandon Dental at 304-927-2775 for your family's dental care. That's Brandon Dental, 304-927-2775. Calhoun Banks is your hometown bank. We've been serving Calhoun and the surrounding areas for over 120 years. We offer many financial and banking services, including commercial, online and mobile banking, mobile wallet, our annual deals on wheels loan sale, home and construction loans, and we specialize in land-only loans. With offices in Grantsville, Arnoldsburg, Elizabeth, and Glenville, we are ready to serve the needs of all of our communities. Stop in and see us at one of our four locations today. Visit our website at CalhounBanks.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CalhounBanksWV. Lobby hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Friday lobby hours are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturdays, our drive through is open 8.30 a.m. to noon. Equal Opportunity Lender, member FDIC. Carpenter's General Store in Spencer has been saving you money and giving you the best selection in Rome County since 1996. We have an amazing selection of domestic, import, and craft beers, ciders, and wines at the absolute lowest prices anywhere. And if we don't have it, we'll get it for you. 
We have a sporting goods section with all the right fishing gear, locally crafted lures, and live bait. And we also carry a great selection of firearms and ammunition. And once again, if we don't have it, we'll get it for you with the lowest prices guaranteed. We're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come see us at 746 Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. It's a convenience store with a whole lot more. Stop by Spencer Cash Saver to check out our fresh produce, quality meats, and our new grab-and-go deli sliced meats and cheeses. New two-week ads start every other Thursday with the best prices for your budget. Save money and shop local at Spencer Cash Saver. This is Dan from D&D Motors and Donna from D&D Customer Care. From sales to service, we can take care of all your automotive needs. So whether you're in the market for a car or just need some repairs, we are just a phone call away. For sales, call 304-519-2157. And repairs, call 304-927-5688. A duo that's perfect together. That's Dave's Plumbing and Heating and Linux. Dave's Plumbing and Heating is your local Linux dealer, and we're committed to making your family's home comfort our top priority. With a wide assortment of Linux products to offer, Dave's Plumbing and Heating will ensure your home's air is perfect for your family. Call us today at 304-823-3479 or visit us online at davesplumbingheating.com to learn more about how you can experience the expert service and care offered by Dave's Plumbing and Heating. Give a license, West Virginia, 043565. Since 2019, DW Excavating has been serving Roan and surrounding counties. We offer services including, but not limited to, repairing driveways, construction site preparation, drainage solutions, property brush clearing, farm road construction, culvert repair and installation, and utility line installation and repair. We provide free estimates. Check out our Facebook page or contact us at 304-532-2968 for more information. DW Excavating, taking pride in our work and in our community. DW Excavating is a proud supporter of Auburn County High School Athletics. Go Raiders! This is Lady Raider volleyball and softball player Mahaley Nicholson for Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Since 2016, ECI has provided West Virginia with top-notch service for both home and commercial needs. We pride ourselves on working closely with our clients to ensure that projects are completed in a timely manner, that customer expectations are met, or in many cases exceeded. Regardless of the job size, we have solutions for everyone. We specialize in septic systems, brush removal, dirt work, asbestos removal, and more. Check us out on the web at www.ecivv.net or contact us for a quote at 304-532-7653. Fax number 304-532-7653. Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Ed Nicholson, owner, West Virginia Contractors License 055775. This is Ashton Rhodes, Chronic Care Manager at Roan County Family Health Care. Are you struggling to control your blood pressure, lower your A1C, or manage other chronic health conditions? Do you ever feel overwhelmed or unsure after an office visit and need some extra help? If that's you, we can help. Roan County Family Health Care is now providing chronic care management services for qualifying patients. By enrolling in our services, you will receive one-on-one -on -one consultations, an individualized comprehensive care plan, education, monthly check-ins, and more. All of this will allow you access to your care team easily for questions, concerns, or follow-up. So are you ready to team up and find a healthier version of you? Give me a call at 304-927-8139. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Let me help you manage your chronic conditions. Rome County Family Healthcare, healthcare for the entire family. Rose Auto Service in beautiful downtown Arnoldsburg, West Virginia, is a full-service auto center providing you with AC, front end and four wheel alignment, tires, exhaust system to basic oil changes and state inspections, and full electrical diagnostic service. Our highly trained technicians with over 40 years of experience between them, Rhodes Auto Service in Arnoldsburg, West Virginia, 304 655 6765. And be sure to check out our Facebook page.
Hi folks, here at Hardman's, we are a full-service building material and hardware store. We have it all, from nuts and bolts, to plumbing, electrical, best-look paint, lumber, drywall, furniture, appliances, flooring, and kitchen and bath. Our best-look paint is a sure win to brighten up your interior walls or spruce up your exterior. We don't just sell the products, but we deliver and install many of them as well. All of our installers are trained and certified. On top of all that, we know a little something about customer service. We'll greet you with a smile and have the knowledge to help you get the job done right. Stop in and let's tackle your next project together. Hardments, our family serving yours since 1907. Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to WVRC 104.7 FM's live streaming coverage of Lady Raider basketball action. We welcome you inside the castle at Roan County High School as we prepare for a Little Canal Conference matchup featuring the Roan County Lady Raiders and the Braxton County Lady Eagles. Alongside the rest of the crew, Katie White is our camera person, Matt White, our statistician slash color analyst. My name is Andrew Miller. We're ready to go here tonight. Roan County 0-2 early on the season. Braxton County with just one game under their belt. They are 0-1, both teams looking for their first win of the season. Matt White, you look at Roan County's first two ball games, we weren't really sure what to expect out of this Roan County team coming into this year with so many new faces. Although they haven't gotten a couple of wins in the first two opportunities, I believe they've battled extremely hard in those two games, and they've kept both of those games within striking distance. Hopefully they can maybe get over the yeah, the, the effort from these young ladies is not going to be in question. They're going to give you everything they've got and then some out there on the floor in that first contest against Ward County, more of a high-scoring affair. Rome County was able to uh, spread the ball around a lot, get a lot of offensive production from uh, contributions from just about everybody. Came up a little bit short. Uh, they were ahead at half. They were down by one in the third quarter. Gave up a quick uh, scoring outburst to the Lady Tigers. Final score of that one, 61 to 52. Little bit of the same. It was it was a quick start for Roan County and Charleston Catholic on Friday night. Uh, Catholic had a two point lead at the half, 19 to 17. Unfortunately, that whole second half was extremely physical by both of those clubs came down mostly to a lot of free throw shooting Ca uh, Charleston Catholic was able to capitalize on more attempts at the free throw line down the stretch of that one final 32 to 22 Roan County coming up short but expect uh, this team to continue to grow it's it's young and inexperienced yeah. at the same time you've got five freshmen that are expected to be playing uh, some varsity minutes in, in, in some capacity. You've got some starters, some returners that have been on these teams but haven't been major, major contributors uh, because of Roan County losing uh, its top four scorers from last season. So you're still trying to kind of figure things out on the fly as you go. There's a lot of really winnable games here early in the season uh, for Roan County, Some a lot of competitive basketball. So uh, don't let the scores fool you. Don't let the record fool you. They're going to battle. They're going to compete, and they're going to continue to get better. Well, you look at the first two scores, 61 to 52, and then 32 to 22. You might as well just expect when you go to Charleston Catholic, it's going to be a rock fight. Every it's going to be a low-scoring affair. But Roan County was only able to score after being down two at the half, five total points in the second half. They got three in the third and two in the fourth. You mentioned physicality in that matchup. In fact, it was so physical that Roan County came out of there with a broken nose. Braylon Bow actually is going to be wearing the face guard here tonight because uh, she got into uh, a little bit of tussle trying to get a rebound and took an elbow across the schnoz. I'll tell you how tough that young lady is. She was pulled from that game with the broken nose, was outside and on her way to go to the hospital, and then said, it's not bleeding. I'm good. Let's go back <laughs> in there. She came back in and tried to return to that ball game. Coach White said, no, that's, that's probably not a good idea. Let's get you checked out first. Can't put you at risk. There's a long season ahead, but got to admire the toughness of Braylon Bow. Well, for Braxton County, just one game so far this year, back on the 30th of November, Thursday 
uh, night game. They had to travel all the way up to Trinity Christian School up in Monongalia County, losing to the Warriors 73 to 50. They were able to put 50 on the board, though, and uh, we're going to see a lot of names, Matt, that we are recognizing here. We, we, In fact, the entire tar starting five, I believe, is back this year from last year's team. And again, they are four seniors and a junior. It's a team that Coach Lunsford believes may be the one he's been trying to build this young group to that now they're seniors. Well, there's been a, uh, I believe it was two years ago, or maybe it may have been last year, uh, if my memory serves me probably incorrectly, but they had that more of a veteran starting five. I think it was this same group. and They underperformed early in the season. The first time around, we saw this group. The second time, it was wholesale. Yes. They went all freshmen and sophomores. I think that's one of those statement games where you say, all right, if you're not giving me everything that I need and expect out of you on the floor, we'll go a different direction. Apparently, message has been received because yes. that of that veteran lineup, four seniors and a junior in the starting lineup for the Braxton County Eagles. Well, let's take a look at those starting lineups while we have a second first off four. Head coach Bill Lunsford and the Braxton County Lady Eagles. Like you said, we've seen these names already before. Uh, the senior guard standing 5'8 is Erica Nicholson. Uh, senior guard standing 5'6, Adrian Lunsford. A junior forward 5'6, Laura Kane. The senior forward 5'8, Paxton Conley. And anchoring the inside for this Lady Eagle team, the 5'11 senior forward, Skylin Abraham. Let's take a look at the starting lineups on the screen for the Lady Raiders. The five foot three sophomore point guard is Anna Tolley. The two guard again with the broken nose wearing the face guard is five seven junior shooting guard Braylon Bow. Piper Harlan also again nursing that ankle injury, getting it wrapped heavily before the match here this evening. She is a five seven senior three guard, kind of a do it all player really. Inside, outside, can shoot the basketball, can dribble, gets inside, not afraid to mix it up. Underneath for the Lady Raiders, the 5'11 senior forward is Hope Mason coming back after missing the first game of the season. And her teammate underneath is the six-foot senior forward in Sammy Kaiser. Those are your starting lineups for both teams. We're going to send it away to a commercial break for a second. When we come back, we'll have... Your opening tip here from the castle, Roan County and Braxton County getting set to square off on WVRC. Builder Supply on Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer is the place to shop for the best selection of cold weather gear. We have a wide selection of boots, including Rocky, Wolverine, and door to boots, steel toed and non steel toed, as low as $78. Carhartt bibs in most sizes starting at just $90 and many different styles of sweatshirts starting at only $40. Visit us on the web at hildersupply.com, check out our Facebook page at Hildreth Oil Field Supply, or stop by and see us at the store located on Route 33 in Spencer. Hilder Supply, a hometown store with hometown ownership and proud supporter of all Roan County athletes. Hi, this is Lisa Simmons inviting you to join the team of saving and visit Honest Fred's Boring at 373 East Main Street, Arnoldsburg Road. We're the largest boring warehouse in town and it's fully stocked with the latest trends in floor covering. All first quality with fair pricing, great values, and professional installation. Stop by or call today, 304-927-8082 or check us out on the web. Take a small drive to Big Savings. Honestfred's.com <laughs> Intelligent Network Securities is a hub zone, service disabled, veteran owned small business located in central West Virginia. INS provides full scope, enterprise level digital security and forensic services. We specialize in state and nation level cybersecurity intelligence, but we feel compelled as a company to offer our commercial consumers both proactive and reactive defense strategies as well. With 15 plus years experience in the field, providing support to commercial as well as nation and state level entities, INS can provide insight to protecting your assets with our use and knowledge of bleeding edge technology. Check us out on the web at intelligent-network-security.com or call us at 304-566-9111. Brian Cottrell, President. 
The inventory spotlight is on savings at Jack Garrett Ford. Like an 18 Ford Echo Sport SES four-wheel drive, 17.9. A 19 Kia Rio LX, 15.9. A 20 Toyota Double Cap SR 4x4, 35.9. While they last, and there's lots more, check out jackgarrettford.com. And accepting special orders for new Fords. The savings are at Jack Garrett Ford, Ripley Road, Spencer. When you find yourself faced with a legal issue, the steps you take next can literally impact the rest of your life. Hiring the right attorney is one of the most important decisions you'll make. At Joel Baker Law Office, we understand the importance of providing prompt, competent, and honest legal representation. Call or text our office today to schedule a consultation. 304-500-9238. As someone who played high school sports, I was able to learn the importance of hard work and being dedicated to your job. And these lessons are why it is important that we support high school athletes. I have continued to apply these lessons to my career as a prosecuting attorney for the last 15 years. And they are the same lessons, hard work and dedication, that I will use every day as a circuit judge. In 2024, vote Josh Downey for circuit judge in Division 30. Paid for by the committee to elect Josh Downey, Aaron M. Nichols, treasurer. Hey, are you serious? I like a good laugh. I bet you do too. Which is why I say if all those insurance companies want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads, go right ahead. As long as it's not my money that's paying for it. Here's how you get seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance. Go to Erie Insurance. With Erie, a great price is just a start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products like Erie Rate Lock. You hear that? Rate Lock. The name says it all. For car insurance, it can't be beat. But hey, don't just take it from me. See for yourself why more than 90% of Erie customers stay with them year after year after year. Seriously. Your Erie Insurance Agent in Spencer is the Kirby Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 927-2544. That's 927-2544. Or visit kirbyinsurance.com. A busy week here at the Castle for the Lady Raiders. Roan County, the first of three home games starting this week, all in the Little Canal Conference. Tomorrow it will be Webster County on a varsity only. Thursday, the Clay County, Roan County matchup. Tonight it is the Raiders and the Eagles. Roan County in the home whites. Black unis for Braxton County as Hope Mason squares off in the center circle with Skylin Abraham. Three officials here tonight and we are ready to go into the back courts. It was going to be Braxton instead. It's the hustle play by Piper Harlan with the steal quickly. Unfortunately, Piper Heading out of bounds, had to save it in to the Lady Eagles. Yeah, that's just good hustle there by Harlan. That should have been uh, tip one by Braxton. Well, right away, they're going to look inside, and that's something, Matt, that we're going to have to watch. Two bigs in Conley and Abraham both. They do have the size advantage on Roan County. Well, they have size. They have uh, experience at the varsity level as well. Uh, Conley very good at the four spot, and Abraham is a, a, a shot blocker extraordinaire. Three-quarter court pressure, and it caused a jump ball situation. After Harlan with the initial takeaway on the jump ball, the possession arrow favoring Braxton County. Roan County will be physical, and they will be aggressive defensively. Conley out near the free throw area. Looked like she may have gotten away with a double dribble. A good job coming to the ball, but you got to find a guard. I used to get in trouble for that a lot when I played ball. No Fours don't handle the ball. A reset out with Nicholson. She'll take it off of the give and go and muscles it up through the net. Quickly a 4-0 lead. Braxton County with a diamond and one press. That zone presser, Matt, that leaves the middle open. That's where you need to go with it. Harlan spins out of pressure, attacks the rim. On the back side, the rebound for Tolly, trying to feed it out, and the long arms of Abraham knock it away. Transition opportunity into the front court. Kane lost the footing, sends it out on the wing, left side. 
The jumper up, no good for Nicholson. Roan County in transition. Tolly crossing into the paint, dishes to Bo on the wing. The 18 footer rolls around and falls through. Good driving dish there by Tolly. Kicking it out, find the wide open bow for the soft jumper off the rim. Pressure for Roan County. Here's a steal by Harlan. Tried to wrap a pass around, whistle coming, and it will go to Braxton County. Got to think if you're Coach White here, you like the way that's, that, that pressure got to the Braxton County guards, and hopefully that's a sign of things that could come here tonight. Well, it's what you're trying to kind of hang your hat on this season is to out-hustle other teams to the ball and just uh, disrupt things offensively. So far, Braxton having a little bit of trouble against this pressure. Kind of a matchup zone pressure. Conley, that's not the one you want bringing it down the court if you're Coach Bill Lunsford and she'll throw it away. It's not her fault. They just found her at the half court area and Roan County was showing more pressure. Well, that's, uh, that, that's exactly what you're looking to do if you're Roan County. Like you said, Drew, right here, you've got to get that ball to the middle. Perfect job. They will. Tolly attacks, gives it over. Here's Kaiser on the runner. Beautiful. Very nice dish, and Kaiser with the baseline runner. Good things happen when you get that ball in the middle of the floor. Speaking of, that's what Braxton does. Into the front court, Nicholson attacks against Mason. Good defense by Hope, keeping the hands straight up. Lady Raiders in transition. Bo going to attack. Feeds it over, left wing, deep two. Tolly in and out. Rebound tipped into the hands of Bo. Her shot is short. Rebound tipped out to Tolly. She'll attack the lane, draws the contact. And boy, we were talking about that preseason, Matt, about how we wanted her to do a lot of that this year. Coach Shandy White said she wanted that as well. And well, asking you shall receive. Well, we, uh, we wanted that a little bit more last season. Tolly found herself in some really good situations. Uh, great ball handler, good vision, more of a true point guard. We're asking her to last year step out of her comfort zone as a freshman. This year, though, as a sophomore, I think you're going to see a lot more uh, of Anna Tolly with the ball in her hands, not just looking to distribute, but looking to get a shot up. Two of two. Now, with the bigs in the game here for Braxton County, she has to be judicious with those drives, obviously. She doesn't want to be reckless into the paint. Here's a pass to the elbow, and stepping in front was Tolly with the steal. Rome County on top by a pair. Good job there by the point guard not to force it. Bring it back out, set your offense up. Mason drives and dishes. Tolly baseline, pull up jumper. So wish. And Rome County now on an 8 0 run after going down. Tolly getting a little mm. bit hip checky, if that's a word. Yeah, did a good job moving her feet, trying to get in front of the ball handler. Just got caught. Timeout on the floor, a break to take, 447. Mark of the first quarter, Roan County up eight to four. McIntosh Hardware Furniture and Appliance, the store that has it all. From quality furniture, Lazy Boy, Serta, Catnapper, appliances, Maytag, Whirlpool, Amana, KitchenAid. And McIntosh offers setup and removal. Power equipment, Echo, Troy Built, and in-house service, hardware, tools, paint, plumbing, electrical, pipes, and fittings. McIntosh Hardware and Appliance, 204 Market Street in Spencer, 304-927-2700. Find us on Facebook for more great deals. Nice little 8-0 run for Roan County after falling behind 4-0. In the first quarter of action, still Less than halfway through this first period of play. Here's a deep shot put up by Lunsford on the left wing. Backside rebound cleared by the senior six-footer, Sammy Kaiser. Lob pass tipped out top Nicholson and stolen. Tolly was trying to get down the court a little quicker. Braxton County though had already recovered. Here's a pass tipped out top by Harlan. And it will be last touched by Piper. It's one thing you will see from Piper Harlan, that deflections. Well, she's the next one up with the, uh, the quick hands. 
moving the feet, causing all kinds of commotion. We'll add those uh, deflections out of bounds as, this, of, as the official stat category from last season. Speak of the devil, another one off the uh, hand of Harlan. Inbounds, they'll swing it out left side into the corner. Trying to dump it in. Double team, though, inside was Kane. Here's Bo into the front court. Delicious pass, and a foul coming on Tolly's layup. That's going to be the uh, six-footer, Skylin Abraham. Bo making that happen on both sides with the rebound and then a beautiful dish. Yeah, still had the vision after the broken nose and wearing the face shield. Gets that rebound. That's a benefit when you've got, you know, good guard play that can come in. Uh, Bo, Harlan, Tolly, all not afraid to get in and mix it up and try to rebound that basketball so they can push it as soon as they get it. I had asked uh, assistant coach Sarah Harlan about how the nose was feeling. You know, breathing, it could be an issue. Just running up and down the floor, the jawing could be an issue with a broken bone. But Sarah said the same thing you mentioned. She's just a tough, tough kid. And she's going to get a quick breather here. Good minutes early for Bo. Kate Mullen checking in for Roan County. Full court pressure after two more made free throws. Roan County on a 10-0 run in the last four minutes of the first quarter. Nicholson will slow it. Checks with her head coach, Bill Lunsford. Lady Eagles will set the offense. Outside weave for a second. Kane will give it between the circles. Now Lunsford checks again. Roan County, kind of a matchup zone hybrid here. We got the speedster Tolly running wild back and forth out top with the two guard set. Conley dribbles out of pressure, tries to fire one down, tipped, taken though by Nicholson, and then Nicholson on the shot has it blocked, and instead of calling a jump ball, which would have been Roan County's anyway, Matt, a whistle and a travel was called I mean you call that either way I guess you know Sammy Kaiser did a good job of getting a hand in there and deflecting that ball Bo a very quick breather Tolly I'm not sure if there was something going on with Tolly the official was speaking with her so they may have make, maybe making her check out real quick so Bo back in she'll run the point Gets to the elbow, backdoor cut. Boy, that was a beautiful defensive play because Mullen was open for a split second, but a nice recovery out there by Bailey Pritt, the sophomore. Yeah, good hustle on defense to get back because that was going to be a wide open layup under the block for Mullen if uh, Pritt didn't get to that one. Looking inside, tipped around. That one, Abraham had a hand on it, knocked away out top, and Roan County ends up touching it last. <clears throat> Nicholson again, quick hands. That's her third steal of the ball game. Just had it deflected after the, after she corralled it. Well, they got Tolly with her right shoe and sock off, and they've got a cold bottle of water, and she is rolling it back and forth on the bottom of her foot. So maybe some cramping issues, something going on with Tolly. Yeah, something right there in the, right in the arch of her foot. It's giving her fits at the moment. Lady Raiders continuing to play stout defensively, knock another one out of bounds. Inbounds on the baseline right. They'll feed it into the big. Abraham muscles it up. Could not get it to fall, and Mason clears it away. It's been a good battle inside there. Kaiser and Mason standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Abraham and Conley. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first. Kaiser's baseline jumper misses. Outlet pass in transition. Here comes Nicholson, and again, Lone County in recovery defensively. Ooh, wow. And Mullen knocked that away, and they're going to give it to Roan County. Did that last touch the Eagles? I don't think it did. I'm not sure. Okay, they are going to call it Braxton County basketball. No, they are going to give it to Roan County. So the official said that was last touch by a Lady Eagle. Rome County sees pressure, breaks it. Now they've got numbers. Mason drives. 12-footer, no good. Rebound underneath, pulled away by Lila Fitzwater. Just a sophomore Fitzwater. But again, she has got all the height in the world. Six foot tall. 
A very tall Braxton County program, it seems, year in and year out. Yeah, even a decent bit of height from their guards as well. Nicholson and Lunsford both. Nicholson attacks, moves baseline, the runner misses. Great box out by Mason, and Hope pulls it down. Wisely holds, finds Harlan in the front court. Lady Raiders with a minute 35 left to work. Bo pumps and drives, rifles it inside. Mason couldn't hold on. Kaiser with the loose ball. Rome County will reset. Inside, Mason goes to the right wing. Layup high off the glass is good. Rome County, since the 4-0 lead for Braxton, has shut the door for the, the last six minutes, basically. And once again, Piper Harlan recovering on deep defense. Knocks the diagonal pass to the left baseline out of ballot bounds. Just great hustle again. You know, like you said, that's what this Rome County team is going to kind of try to inflict some damage defensively against teams. Once for going for the three whistle, though, and that's going to be an offensive foul. That old pick play that you see, and I'm telling you, Matt, for probably 50 years, they were trying to get Lunsford off the screen out top, and instead they called a foul. And another one coming now, a little frustration. Foul by Bailey Pritt. 101 left in the first. Roan County with the lead and possession. Bo fires it in on the cut, and that'll be another foul as Harlan takes it strong, takes it quick. I just brought that ball across her body, like underneath, going to make a, a, a scoop layup attempt. Caught Pritt out of position, reached. Got the old hi-yah right across the arms. I like what Coach White is doing here with this motion offense. She's picking out at the foul line area and getting these guards cutting down the lanes. Bo delivered a great pass, and I think Harlan just drew the contact with that quick take. Yeah, when you catch it and go up that quickly with your momentum going to the basket, you're going to catch the defense off guard. One of two, rebound comes down to Fitzwater. Roan County has scored 13 in a row after trailing 4 0. Lady Eagles, 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Good pass inside, and that will catch Roan County chasing behind the play and the foul coming on Bo. That'll be Laura Kane coming to the free throw line. That was a good, good offensive possession there for the Lady Eagles. A little bit of a down screen from Fitzwater clearing a little bit of space and you had that you're trailing the play coming off of a high ball screen up there at the at the uh, the right elbow area really not much Bo could do except for foul Roan County just with two team fouls here in the first quarter Kane unable to break the schneid right now O of two here comes Bo now attacking off the missed second shot and soft foul coming here by Kane And that will send Braylon Bow to the free throw line. 28.5 on the scoreboard clock. <laughs> Lady Raiders shooting it well from the charity stripe in the first quarter. I believe that's uh, six out of seven now as a team. Something Rome County did not do well against Charleston Catholic was convert from the free throw line. One of two, rebound Fitzwater. 25 on the clock, Braxton will cross. We'll see how aggressive they are. Nicholson, she can shoot it from outside. Misses from the baseline right. The putback no good. Ball on the ground, and we've got a travel coming for Kaiser. Nicholson got a hand in a little late, but Kaiser coming down with that loose ball rebound falls and is whistled. 14.3 now on the clock. Lunsford lobs it in on the block. She'll take it back. Shot blocked by Harlan. Gets it back in the paint. And I think this time Piper's going to be whistled for a reach. It will be Harlan. And after Braxton County scored the first couple of buckets, there is the first point since the first minute of the game. Lunsford rolls one around. Follows it up with a swish. 
Lead down to single figures. Roan County can work for the final shot. Harlan into the front court. Kaiser, pull up jumper, baseline, no good. Rebound, Mason, no good. Rebound on the backside, and I think Mullen may have been the last to touch it. 1.4, on, 1 though, is all that remains. That'll be an inbound for Braxton County, and Roan County will take the lead into the second period. After one, Lady Raiders 14, Braxton County 6. Hey guys, this is Shannon from Miller Steels and Deals. We have all your shopping needs, from the bedroom to the kitchen, bathroom, and laundry room. We got you covered. Looking for furniture or even maybe a gift card? Come on by Miller Steels and Deals on Mount Zion Ridge in the Old Armory Building, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, for the best prices around. Give us a call, 304-804-6006. I'm Corey Grog. I'm a women's health and family nurse practitioner with Minnie Hamilton Health System, Glenville office. I'm a Glenville girl, born and raised. That's why I'm so excited to announce the opening of our women and maternal care services in Glenville. This will allow women to get prenatal care close to home and still deliver at their choice of hospital. We've also hired Kayla Stewart as our patient navigator. She will be offering childbirth education classes, lactation support for breastfeeding moms, and postpartum care and support for when mom and baby come home. Along with pre- and postnatal care, our mini Hamilton team sees patients from birth throughout the lifespan. We are your partner in health today, tomorrow, and for life. Please call the Glumbel office for more information at 304-462-7322. Second quarter action now, Rome County leading 14 to six. Lady Raiders playing very solid defensively in the first quarter. But again, Matt, you mentioned the free throw shooting, really the difference in that first, getting to the line number one, then finishing. Yeah, Rome County six of eight from the free throw line in the quarter. Uh, Braxton County only converted on two attempts. So that's been a, uh, a major bright spot for this Roan County offense early. Good, good to see Anatoly back in the ball game. Great drive, persistence by the sophomore Bailey Pritt. Had it knocked away, picked it up on the drive and lays it up and in for the first points of the second quarter. A good defense, a lot of traffic. Pritt just able to stay with that basketball long enough to get a shot up and get it down. 14-8 Roan County. Bo looking for a give and go. Got into a little bit of traffic there and throws it into the hands of Nicholson. And Nicholson all over the place, her fourth steal of the ball game. Broom County did a really good job rebounding that first half or that first quarter. 11 to 5 the advantage. And again, they are giving up a little bit of size. Missed three, rebound by Kane on the backside. Now Fitzwater takes it away. Nicholson drives in, the pass deflected by Kaiser inside to Fitzwater again. That shot blocked by Kaiser. Rebound, Hope Mason. One dribble and then looks for the guard. Front court, here's Kaiser, baseline jumper, just a little strong. Rebound comes down to Kane. Braxton will slow it down. A couple of good looks for Sammy over there on that left baseline. That's where she is the most comfortable. Uh, she's really improved on those 15-foot jumpers over the couple of years here Another. at the varsity level. Another deflected pass by Kaiser, stolen by Roan County. Unfortunately, this one last touched on the half-court dish. Out of bounds, last touch by Tolly. Harlan was looking for Tolly. It was hit by a Braxton player, but last touched by Roan County. Minute. Actually, two minutes gone by plus now in the second quarter. Pass inside. Ends up in the hands of Fitzwater. Shot blocked. That's Kaiser again. All the way out top. Here comes Tolly looking for help. Harlan puts the brakes on, and Roan Kenny will set up the offense. Bo, nobody on her. She'll attack to the rim. The layup no good. Rebound last touched out of bounds by Harlan. Yeah, a little bit of body contact on that drive, but. Bo very strong with the ball, got it up on the rim. Good hustle again by Roan County. Pressure in the back court. Wise decision, Nicholson gets across the timeline, puts the brakes on, and then just airmails the pass. 
trying to go cross court. Maybe would have been better off to have kept that dribble alive. Get back out to the top, maybe set the offense up. But Lunsford and Fitzwater will check out. Paxton Conley in as well as sophomore Lauren Pritt. Roan County yet to score in almost three minutes of the second quarter. Good pass inside, left block. Tolly muscles it up against pressure and contact. The basket and a foul coming. And the foul will be whistled on Bailey Pritt. Or was that, I'm sorry. I think it was Pritt. Was it Pritt or Kane? Kane checking out. Well, Abraham was already at the scorer's table before that possession. Okay. So I'm assuming that she was going to go ahead and check in for Kane regardless. Three-point play opportunity missed. Rebound, Abraham. Like the way she held that ball high on the board. Rome County, though, finally breaking the three-minute schnei. Inside pass, Abraham. Turnaround jumper on the right block. Misses. Conley, though, with the rebound. Brit the one-hand pass over to Nicholson for three. No good. The backside rebound controlled by Fritt into the lane. Runner. No good. Rebound. Here comes Harlan flying in and pulled it away from Abraham. Bo pushing the action down to Tolly. Tolly, night lifty dribbling and draws contact. That time it's going to be on, I believe, Lauren Fritt. And again, the new situation this year for high school girls basketball is five fouls each quarter. That gets you to the two foul shots bonus, and they'll reset them every single quarter. Timeout on the floor for the Lady Eagles. We'll take it with them. Roan County leading 16 to 8. For the next few seconds, picture yourself retired. What do you see? What sounds do you hear? How do you feel? However you picture your retirement, planning early is the best way to make it happen. And State Farm agent Norman L. Daniels is here in Spencer to help. He can chat with you about the kind of retirement that you want and then help you find the best ways to save for it. A little today can add up to a lot tomorrow. So get started now. Call State Farm agent Norman L. Daniels and Spencer at 304-927-5680 and picture yourself happy. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A much slower second quarter than the first for Roan County, but defensively and on the boards, Matt, they're holding their own, and they still have an eight-point lead as they did at the end of one. Yeah, a little bit undersized. You've got, you know, the Abraham, you got Conley underneath. Now, Fitzwater has, was doing extremely well on the rebounds, but Roan County doing a good job holding the starting four and five in check. Unforced error by Roan County on the inbound pass. 424 remaining in the half. Pressure continues in the backcourt for Roan County. Zone pressure into the middle. Almost got a travel on Pritt. Looking opposite was Lunsford and a beautiful dip through left-handed layup by Skylin Abraham. It was a really good job of keeping the ball up high. Great drive by Mason, couldn't get the layup to fall. Keen on the putback, had the shot partially blocked. We've got a loose ball. Tie up, possession arrow stays with Rome Kenny. That is a hustle play by Hope Mason, Matt, because otherwise I think that is Braxton County's basketball. Yeah, more than likely I would say you are right. Good play there by Mason. Kate Bullen, who checked in during the timeout, is the trigger person. You've got Ella Keen in there giving Sammy Kaiser a breather underneath. Well, a good play there by Mullen. Not often do you see her take it off the dribble. A lot of times, at least last year, she was a spot-up shooter, but she took it off the dribble and drew foul contact. She'll be at the line. Well, got a quick first move and caught uh, Lunsford kind of leaning into that one and just pulled the trigger quickly, uh, knowing that she was going to get the contact. Rattles the first home, Roan County leading. By seven, three minutes, 49 seconds left here in the first half of play. And Roan Kenny's good shooting from the charity stripe continues. And so does the pressure in the back court. Pritt lobbing it into the front court right. The look opposite side. There is Piper Harlan again. 
You think it's open, Matt, and you go for the pass, and there comes the flash of white. Sometimes I think Piper is just trying to bait you into throwing that. It looks like she's, uh, you know, 20 steps behind the play, and before you know it, she's right there with the de good defense. Finally feeds it on a beautiful dish, and Pritt wide open on the left. Eighteen twelve, Roan County by six. They've led by as many as ten. They trailed four zero to start. Went on that ten zero run. Baseline runner, and uh, again we mentioned the challenge that Tolly would take to the lane. Five three versus six foot. That time Abraham won. Yeah, Abraham in good defensive position. Uh, it was a good dribble drive there. Tolly getting underneath, but much better recovery there from Abraham. Bo and Kaiser back in. Keen and Mason will check out. Bo hands it off. Takes it right back from Mullen. Feels the trap coming. Tries to feed out of it, but Pritt was there quickly. Good defensive play by Pritt. Yeah, he's got stuck in that corner. Tough spot to be. Baseline jumper shot up and good. Is it a two or a three? And also a foul coming. They got Conley on the push underneath, but baseline yeah. jumper was two. And then on the box out, Conley whistle. Lee cut down to four now. So Braxton County closing the gap here with just 255 left in the half. Braxton County's been racking up the fouls, though. That's four. In this quarter alone, Roan County with no team fouls yet on the board in the second. Bo with a wise decision. She was trying to hand it off. Not available inside Kaiser. Go ahead and look opposite. Lady Raiders will reset offensively. Two minutes, 30 seconds left. Good backdoor cut by Tolly and challenged again, though, by Abraham. Tolly got up in the air, Matt, and tried to contort. Oh, Abraham with another good recovery. She was all the way at the left elbow, retreated down to the right right block to challenge that shot. Conley dribbling to the baseline, gives it back out on the corner. Nicholson, strong defense by Harlan out on the wing. Two minutes left in the half. Braxton County resets the offense. Inside, Abraham, turn around, baseline, no good. Harlan couldn't hold on to it. Lunsford attacking now, whistle coming on Kaiser. Just a little bit of a body check by Sammy. And that will send Adrian Lunsford, the five foot six senior guard, to the line. And Kaiser's been playing some very good defense underneath. She's got four rebounds. She also has three block shots in this one. Little holding pattern here. Not sure. Special's trying to get things sorted out. Uh, had a uh, water bottle from the stands come into play. Well, Braxton Ooh. County has it within a possession now. The student section must have thought the officials were getting thirsty. <laughs> Runs for good on both, and it is a two point ball game now. Minute 40 left. Nicholson going to pick up Tolly as she crosses the timeline. Bo pumps, drives, gets to the elbow. Good ball movement for Roan County. Tolly baseline, shot blocked. Boy, that was a great play defensively by Lunsford. Tolly had her beat baseline, and Lunsford avoided the foul and got the block. That was just a, the height and reach difference on that one, Drew. Kane trying to feed it into the paint. They'll dish to Lunsford, baseline three off the mark. Rebound, Mason two on one. Down to Tolly and it's over the head. A right, good opportunity for Roan County, but Mason and Tolly could not connect on the pass. And just a couple extra dribbles, need to get that ball out a little quicker and try to get some more air under it. I just fired that one a little too strong over the head. Under a minute left here in the first half of play. Here's Harlan coming and taking it away. Piper 
Driving to the baseline, the runner off the mark, rebound on the floor. Out of pass, it's anybody's ball. Lunsford saves it in. Nicholson has it knocked away. Taken by Harlan. Piper, she's going to attack. And Harlan, boy, I tell you, I don't know. This may be offensive. It could be with a shove, or it could be Nicholson getting in front. That's going to be Nicholson. Coach Lunsford wants that to be offensive foul. Yeah, that probably could have gone either way, like you said. But I think Nicholson's feet were still moving as she was getting in front. Harlan did extend a little bit as well. Uh, I couldn't have argued too much either way on that one. Well, Coach Lunsford having a word with the official who made that call, kind of a smile on his face because it could have been either way. Then. Well, if you're the coach, of course you're going to argue that play either <laughs> way. But uh, as a uh, unbiased uh, viewer here, yeah, I would uh, – Probably go ahead and give the benefit of the doubt to the offense, maybe in that one. Harlan, two of two, and then steals the inbounds. Tyler, though, out top, blanketed with coverage and has it knocked away. Now Lunsford has it knocked away. Tolly on the ground and a timeout called. Great defense by Roe County. This is the MO that Coach Shandy White said she wanted to see from her Lady Raiders. Timeout on the floor with 21 seconds left. Roe County leading by four. Good evening. The leaves are turning colors and our absolute favorite time of the year to list a home is in the fall with Mother Nature in all its glory. I'm Taylor May. I'm Jordan Spears. And I'm Mike Greenlee, broker for Old Fences Real Estate. Contrary to what the news is telling you, we are having a fantastic year in home sales. Banks are eager to lend money and let us help you through this complicated process and make it look easy. Call our phenomenal team to list today. That's Old Fences Realty. Let's went back and listen to the North Marion game intro from football season for a second. Rome County leading 20 to 16. Two things, Matt, already that just stick out like a sore thumb for Rome County. Great defense and free throws. Yeah, that's really what's been uh, letting Rome County to keep this lead. A big outburst in the first quarter, 14 points. So far this second quarter, Braxton County making a bit of a comeback. It's they've, they've won the quarter uh, 10 to 6, but still, Rome County with that four point lead. It's been at the free throw line. It's five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 10 of the 20 have come from the charity stripe for Rome County. And high production as well. They're not missing many. After the timeout on the loose ball, Tolly into the front court with 12 on the clock. Bo needs some help, looking for a screen. Harlan rolls off, runner in the paint with five seconds. Ball's on the ground, picked up though by the Eagles with one second on the clock, and that will run out the clock. Roan County with a 20 to 16 lead after two quarters of play here from the Castle. Break to take for our sponsors. We'll come back, recap the first half, have your statistics. You're watching Lady Raider basketball on WVRC. Want to look good and feel good? Then stop by and see John Penna at Penna's Barbershop in Spencer on Main Street. Want a guaranteed spot? You can set up an appointment, but if time is not an option, walk-ins are always welcome. Traditional haircuts, no problem. Tapers, high and tight, flat tops, and beard trims. Or if you're looking for something new, he can do that too. Custom designs, burst fades, and mullets. That's right, West Virginia Waterfall. Keeping you styling and profiling. Penis Barbershop has been a proud supporter of Roan County and Raider Athletics since 2009. Penis Barbershop on Main Street and Spencer. Stop in, call, or text at 304-531-4218. Hello, my name is Philip Deaver. I am running for Roan County Sheriff in 2024. I have been and will continue working to regain the community's respect, trust, and faith your vote in May of 2024 would be greatly appreciated. Paid for by the candidate. Visit Phoenix Nutrition at 225 Main Street in Spencer. Try our awesome drinks. It'll only take one sip to find out what we're all about. We offer loaded teas to jumpstart your day. All of our teas are sugar-free with just 24 calories. We have such a wide variety of combinations you may never try the same drink twice. 
Phoenix offers protein shakes and protein coffees as well. We are open Tuesday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Follow us on Facebook at Phoenix Nutrition, Instagram at phoenix.nutrition.wv, and come visit us at 225 Main Street in Spencer. Proud supporter of all Roan County Raiders. Being healthy means having the energy and strength each day to do the things you need to do for yourself and loved ones. But what happens when you need help? As a family medicine provider at Rhone General Hospital, I'm here to let you know I've got you. I'm nurse practitioner Leanne Thomas, and I'm accepting patients of all ages at Rhone General Medical Clinic offering you care you can trust close to home. For routine screenings, sick visits, chronic health conditions, referrals, and more, I've got you. Ridgetop Rentals, located at 3502 Clay Road in Spencer, West Virginia, is the place to go for all your equipment needs. We have tractors, dozers, backhoes, excavators, termites, air compressors, straw blowers, generators, jackhammers, torpedo heaters, and much more. We are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. You can check us out on the web at ridgetoprentals.machinerytrader.com, follow us on Facebook at Ridgetop Rentals LLC, or you can call us today at 304-908-2004 or 304-927-1418. Ridgetop Rentals is a proud supporter of all Roan County Athletics. Let's go Raiders! Merry Christmas from the staff of Stats Pharmacy. We are here to help you with your holiday shopping needs. We have new holiday lighted bases and lanterns from Stony Creek in a variety of styles, including cardinals, snowmen, and farm scenes. We also have evergreen house and garden flags. A large selection of ornaments, farmhouse decor, and wreaths are also available. Best wishes from your friends at Staff's Pharmacy, located in Spencer. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and a joyful New Year. It's cold outside. Better check that propane tank. Star well behind Spencer Middle School will fill your tank when you bring it in. Star Weld also checks your tank for safety to see if it's damaged or dangerous in any way. Don't trade for someone else's grungy tank. We fill yours. Safety, seven days a week and service. Shop Star Weld for propane, welding gases, and supplies. Let Star Weld fire you up. Behind Spencer Middle School, dial 927-2520 or stop today. I'm Circuit Judge Anita Harold Ashley, and I'm proud to sponsor this ad supporting the Roan County Raiders. I've spent a lot of time participating in sporting events in my lifetime as a player, a Raider parent, and a fan. I've observed there are lots of ways people enjoy the games. It might be like my dad, who quietly studied the game to catch stats, or my dear mom, who gained a reputation for yelling at the refs. Or the fan may be there primarily to enjoy the band or the cheerleaders. But it's clear, we're all rooting for the Raiders. Let's win. Paid for by the committee to re-elect Judge Anita Harold Ashley, Kate J. Burbank, Treasurer. When it comes to providing facility solutions and maintenance support, the industrial and railroad industries, as well as port and inland terminals and Department of Defense operation, nobody does it better than Air Production and Service, Inc. At APS, our team is dedicated to providing high-quality service, parts, and equipment for your air production systems. Whether you are in need of air compressor products or services, you can turn to our team with confidence. We have offices located in Jacksonville, Florida, Corbin, Kentucky, Pembroke, North Carolina, and Spencer, West Virginia. To expand our reach and make it easier for you to get the help you need with minimal weight or frustration. Contact us today to learn more about the different types of services and products we offer. Contact your local APS representatives, Mike and Michelle Spears, in Spencer, West Virginia at 304-927-2550. Proud supporter of all Roan County Athletics. This is XYZ Insurance. How can I help? I have a question about my home policy. Okay, question about phone policy. <sighs> Home policy. Okay, gnome policy. H-O-M-E, home. Technology is great, but sometimes it's better to talk with a real person. With Erie Insurance, you have a caring, independent agent who's with you from beginning to end. We don't have any H-O-M-E's on record. Your Erie agent in Spencer is Ashley Insurance. Get a quote today at ashleyinsures.com. Go to erieinsurance.com for company licensure and product details. It's a very, very, very fine house. This is Jennifer Board Nichols at Board Depew Realty. So many things have changed around us lately, and we are all concerned about what the future holds. 
During these uncertain times, we want you to know that one thing will not change, and that's the service and the professionalism we will offer you at Board Depew Realty. My grandmother started this company over 64 years ago, and one thing hasn't changed. If you use Board Depew Realty to buy or sell your home, you are guaranteed to receive service that is guided by principles like honesty and wisdom and a conscience. Owning a home is the American dream, and that hasn't changed. So let Board Depew Realty show you the way to that dream. Even if the times are changing, principles and service shouldn't. So let Board Depew Realty show you that some things remain the same. The very, very, very fine house. We welcome you back to the castle at the half. Roan County leading Braxton County 20 to 16 a couple of things that really caught your eye if you were watching this game if you're a lady raider fan at least roan county defensively really getting after it playing great defense steals and deflections were a big deal for roan county and on top of that getting to the free throw line and making some hay at the free throw line roan county had 10 of their 20 points from the charity stripe here in this first half but match uh, that second quarter the change that happened was the rebounding advantage for Braxton County. Yeah, it was basically a, a flip of the first quarter. Roan County did a great job early, uh, 11 to five in the rebound margin. Second quarter though, went Braxton County's way, 11 to five. So we stand 16 all in the rebound category. Roan County did a good job moving the ball. Uh, they, you know, four assists on uh, their field goal attempts to Braxton County's two. And that movement of the ball, like you said, led to a lot of uh, uh, attacking the basket, getting foul calls, and converting from the free throw line. Uh, steals, both teams nodded at seven apiece. Uh, Piper Harlan with four for Roan County. Erica Nicholson with four for Braxton County. Block shots, something Roan County not necessarily known for, but up four to two here at the half. Sammy Kaiser with three block shots in the middle for Roan County. Scoring wise, uh, Anatoly, she's leading the way eight points. She had three rebounds, two assists, two steals. And then it was solid contribution from each Braylon Bow with three points, a rebound and a steal. Piper Harlan, three points, two rebounds, four steals, two assists and one block shot. Kate Mullen with two points. And Sammy Kaiser, two points, four rebounds, and three blocked shots. Hope Mason, two points, five rebounds, and then Ella Keen chipping in with a rebound of her own for the Lady Eagles. It was pretty balanced as well. Erica Nicholson with four points and four steals. Adrian Lunsford with four points, all from the free throw line, two rebounds, an assist, steal, and a blocked shot. And then Bailey Pritt with four points, four rebounds and one steal. Two points for Paxton Conley, two boards and an assist, and Skyland Abraham, two points, two rebounds, a steal, and a blocked shot. Lauren Kane with a couple of rebounds to her credit, and Lila Fitzwater with four rebounds to round out the scoring for the Lady Eagles. Added up, Roe County with a four point lead here at the half, 20 to 16 as we are getting set to start second half action. Again, a first game of a busy week for the Lady Raiders. All games at home this week, three of them. Tomorrow it'll be varsity only at seven versus Webster. And then Thursday, Rome County hosting at Clay County. Don't forget also on WVRC this week, Saturday, we will be here all day for the Gary Bender Raider Cup, the Invitational Wrestling Tournament. That is Saturday beginning at 10 a.m. Second half underway. Roan County sends Braylon Bow, Anatale, Piper Harlan, Sammy Kaiser, and Hope Mason to the floor. Another block shot for the Lady Raiders to begin. And then Kaiser ends up with a loose ball rebound. Kaiser, another good defensive play underneath. They got Kane at the left elbow with a high ball screen moving to the basket. Great reaction there from Kaiser. Only difference starting five for Braxton here in the second. They've brought Pritt in with Conley, Lunsford, 
Abraham and Cain as Nicholson is on the bench. Again, you think back to Nicholson and Harlan crashing into each other. You hope that Nicholson's okay. She was looking a little bit rough there. Bone County with a turnover, a little pressure. Braxton throws over top the pressure, and Fritt will slow it down. And honestly, that is the way to break a press. If you can get across the timeline and have the wherewithal to put the brakes on, then you can get to a half-court set. A lot of turnovers happen on the second half of a press. Yeah, if you're trying to really, you know, push the action down the floor, sometimes you get going too fast. Lunsford misses. Kane's put back no good. This time Abraham with a third opportunity, and that one out of the rim. Rebound that time by Hope Mason. Bo attacking, dishing. Square up three. Beautiful. That one slissed through by Piper Harlan. Remember last year, Harlan struggled shooting from the outside, but that was her first year back in basketball. And she said, I promise I'm a better shooter than this. It just <laughs> took some time to get her confidence back. Tolly playing some great defense on a lob pass. They were cutting Kane. Tolly was trying to catch up and like a defensive back, just put her hands up. Yeah, put your hands up. Don't make contact and just get in the way of that pass. Kane was going to have a free run to the basket if Tolly doesn't get a hand on that. Good to see Nicholson is coming in, so she's okay. She'll replace Prick. Less than two minutes gone by, third quarter action. Inbounds to Kane under the basket. Ball's on the floor. It's last touched out of bounds by the Lady Eagles. Coach Bill Lunsford, hands on hips, frustrated with that one. Eagles will pick up defense at half court. Harlan, here's a, a beautiful feed. Tolly on the run, a little bit out of control there, unfortunately. She tried to throw it up at the last second, I think, Matt, underneath the basket too much. Yeah, just momentum. Kept her going toward the basket, couldn't get set. Good job, though, to get one up onto the rim. That was a tough spot to be in. Another deflection out of bounds by Harlan caused that inbounds. Two minutes gone by, third quarter action. Nicholson looking for a screen, gets into the lane, it's lost on the ground, we've got a jump ball. This will be Roan County possession on the jump ball. So I'm getting a hand in there, I think that was Bo reaching in and getting that jump ball. Tolly working against Nicholson. Bo gives it right back. Now Tolly right to the rim. Ooh, Ooh some contact. Thought there may have been a foul. None called. Coach Shandy White doubled over in pain. And just uh, mental anguish there, not physical pain. Looking for a call, didn't get it. We did get a jump ball. Say so that's the, uh, the best case scenario for Coach White is to go into that fetal position so she doesn't get a technical <laughs> on that one because that was pretty good contact by... Nicholson. Roan County, though, will continue to play stifling defense. 5.30 left. Nicholson gets a screen, gets into the lane. The runner may have been partially tipped. Now we've got a jump ball, and that was all Kaiser. Abraham, six feet tall, Matt, but when you bring that ball down around the hips, you don't, you're don't. you about five feet tall at that point. Well, she was looking to try to go back up with it as well. I mean, Kaiser just as tall, so you really didn't even have to bring it down that far for Sammy to get a hand on that one. Tolly driving against two defenders. Another spot of three and a second straight from the exact same area for Piper Harlan. Two threes in a row and Roan County's ballooned the lead back to its largest at 10. Good first four minute stretch here for Roan County in the third. Lunsford, that runner is blocked away. Loose ball rebound, Anatoly wanting to push. Kaiser, shot block, whistle, foul. That's going to be Conley on the foul. Foul starting to mount up a little bit for Braxton County. That's three on Conley. Lauren Pritt with three as well. Bailey Pritt with two. Kaiser's first just barely rims out. Now it will be Bailey Pritt checking in. 
replacing Lunsford. Four minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the third. Second free throw, good one of two. Timeout on the floor. Roan County up by 11. Break to take. We'll be right back. This message comes to you courtesy of Brandon Dental, located on Hospital Drive in Spencer, West Virginia. Soda pop consumption has been linked to a number of health issues, including obesity, diabetes, and osteoporosis. And it's no secret that soda pop can cause tooth decay. The sugar combines with bacteria in the mouth and forms a strong acid that attacks tooth and end. By limiting or eliminating your consumption of soda pop and other sugary drinks, as well as brushing twice a day and flossing once a day, you can significantly reduce your risk of cavities. Call Brandon Dental at 304-927-2775 for your family's dental care. That's Brandon Dental, 304-927-2775. Well, the first quarter was owned by Roan County. The second, Braxton came back. And right now, the first four minutes looking very strong for the Lady Raiders. And a couple of back-to-back uh, -back three-pointers for Piper Harlan is what's broke this one open uh, to start the second half. Four and a half or minutes remaining here in the third. Rome County leading by 11, their largest advantage of the night. Pass inside, dangerous. Kaiser recovered on the cut, deflected it away, stolen by Tolly. Mason attacking, splits two defenders. Ball, though, out of her hands, and you can see a little frustration by Hope. She had the lane, split two defenders, and lost it on the drive. That was a good first step move, just couldn't complete the play. Pressure by Rome County nearly caused a turnover on the inbounds pass. Lady Eagles will slow things down. Conley out top, guarded tightly there by Mason. Three minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Now Kate Mullen will head to the scores table, as will Fitzwater and Pritt. Rome County with a steal. Mason finding Tolly. Tolly from 12 feet, it's good. Beautiful runner. Tolly into double figures for the contest. And it was a good steal. Hope Mason did a good job of gathering herself with that basketball and found the cutter. Tolly straight to the basket. Beautiful play there for Rome County. Nicholson looked like she wanted to pull the trigger on a three. Instead, inside, beautiful dish by Kane. And Abraham, she just has a knack, Matt, for getting that turn quickly, keeping that ball in the right hand away from the defender and drawing contact. And it was a good defensive recovery on the backside by Hope Mason. Just got caught with that little bit of a reach. If she stays straight up and down and just challenges that one, it's going to be a difficult shot. But a, a, a good play there that's already worked out in favor as Abraham misses the first. Substitutions everywhere. Mason, Bo out, Mullen and Keen in. Lunsford checking in as well as Pritt. And Fitzwater set to check in as soon as Abraham just swished that one. One of two, time on the floor for Braxton County. We'll take it with them. 12 point Roan County advantage. Calhoun Banks is your hometown bank. We've been serving Calhoun and the surrounding areas for over 120 years. We offer many financial and banking services, including commercial, online and mobile banking, mobile wallet, our annual deals on wheels loan sale, home and construction loans, and we specialize in land-only loans. With offices in Grantsville, Arnoldsburg, Elizabeth, and Glenville, we are ready to serve the needs of all of our communities. Stop in and see us at one of our four locations today. Visit our website at CalhounBanks.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CalhounBanksWV. Lobby hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Friday lobby hours are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturdays, our drive through is open 8.30 a.m. to noon. Equal opportunity lender, member FDIC. Out of the Braxton timeout, Roan County leading 3.13 remaining in the third. Well, we only have one game to go by with Braxton, but they put 50 on the board. Right now, Roan County has them at 17 late in the third quarter. I imagine if you ask Coach Sandy White, she'd be happy with this defensive performance so far. Roan County, unfortunately, turning it over on the offensive side on that set. 
Well, Maroon County's done a very good job as Lunsford knocks down the three coming off of the high ball screen. Beautiful shot there. Uh, I was going to say, Worm County's done a very good job of being the controlled aggressor, aggressor on defense. Only five team fouls total for the ball game. Like, op great opportunity for Kaiser getting down the court quickly. Couldn't get the shot to fall. And now Braxton County looking to cut a little more into this deficit. Worm County, though, stifling defense throughout. Again, that was a great shot, by the way, by Lunsford. She had very little room, fired it quickly from two feet behind the line, got it to fall. Now Fitzwater with a nice drive, backing in on Kaiser. Yeah, Fitzwater with a pretty good size advantage there over Kaiser. Uh, Sammy did a good job challenging and keeping her hands straight up and not committing a silly foul. Now Kaiser looking for Tolly, loses it. And it will be Braxton County basketball. That was good defense again. Nicholson slid in front. Now Kaiser and Keene will be out. Back in Hope Mason and Braylon Bow. 150 left in the third quarter. Roan County has led by as many as 13 points. At the moment, it is a seven-point advantage. Dangerous pass, almost stolen, but it'll lead to a two-on-one break. Fitzwater, though, is going to be whistled for the travel. And again, Matt, that is just hustle on recovery by Mason. Well, Fitzwater you know, just shuffled the feet a little bit. You know, she wanted to just go straight up and had to hesitate because Mason was back there defensively. Rome County broke the press, almost had a look. Here comes Harlan driving, missing, rebound on the floor, and we've got a whistle. Oh, a little extra, <laughs> extracurriculars there. Foul called on Tolly on the reach of the rebound. Britt and Harlan, cooler heads prevailing there, thank goodness. Minute 20 left here in the third. Roan County has held their largest lead at 13. Braxton County now trying to fight back with a couple of nice series. Britt drives around to the corner. Out on the right wing. Nicholson's going to step back. She can hit from deep. That one, though, just hits the front of the rim. And Fitzwater, a great effort, stepping on the end line. 57 remaining in the third. Now Nicholson can hit from that distance. I think fading away from it, though, will be a little bit tougher to get enough on that one. Mullen's going to square up a shot. Whistle coming, and they're going to call Kate shuffling the feet. I like the way Rome County broke that press, though. They got right into the center circle with Hope Mason, Matt, and she looked opposite. You couldn't have drawn it up any better. Yeah, good execution there on the front end. They're just a little bit too much shuffling of the feet. Rome County on a defensive rebound. Mullen looking for a pass, unfortunately, for Kate. Nicholson showing the athleticism and the height and the extension of the arms. Lady Raiders, though, will have it under the basket. 35.8 remaining in the third. Harlan throws one up off the side of the backboard. And now pressure, and this is going to be a steal by Harlan underneath. Whistles coming and jump ball. Actually, no, before the jump ball is called, there's going to be a foul whistled, and that's going to be, I believe, Fitzwater. So Roan County possession. Officials getting together. One of them called a foul. One of them called jump ball. Bo lobs it in. Here's a good look for Mullen missing at the lane, but the rebound is stolen away from Braxton. Anatoly with the steal of the rebound and then showing the animation to make sure she drew the contact on that putback. Good effort again by Tolly. That foul is going to go against Lauren Pritt. That's going to be number four on her for the Eagles. Just imagine if you were a, trying to do a flying squirrel off of the high dive. That's what Tolly looked like trying to flatten out to get that foul call. A rare miss for Roan County at the charity stripe tonight. Lauren Pritt checking out of the ball game. 
Lauren Kane back in. 25 on the clock. Tolly gets one of two, and Roan County leads by eight. Kane into the front court. Gives it off to Erica Nicholson inside, posting up. Fitzwater, and that's going to be Mason trying to deflect it away initially, but Fitzwater getting wide there, Matt, causing that reach. Mason trying to trying to get around Fitzwater and trying to front the post a little bit. Like I said, Fitzwater just using her body to shield Mason. Inbounds, quick shot put up, Nicholson, no good. Rebound, Lunsford, the turnaround is up and in. Ten seconds left. Bo lobs it in the front court. Tolly looking over. Here's Mason with four on the clock. Gets under the basket on a whistle, and that's going to be Fitzwater again. But that's only foul number four, so Roan County has 1.9 seconds. They'll have to get a an inbound, maybe a couple dribbles and a shot. Yeah, I'd say at this point you probably just need to, if you can't get that original spot up, you want to try to get something going to the basket. Harlan throws one up. You just got to do that. Good effort. Nicholson with the block to end. Quarter number three. The Lady Raiders will take a six-point advantage into the final stands of 30 to 24. Carpenter's General Store in Spencer has been saving you money and giving you the best selection in Roan County since 1996. We have an amazing selection of domestic, import, and craft beers, ciders, and wines at the absolute lowest prices anywhere. And if we don't have it, we'll get it for you. We have a sporting goods section with all the right fishing gear, locally crafted lures, and live bait. And we also carry a great selection of firearms and ammunition. And once again, if we don't have it, we'll get it for you with the lowest prices guaranteed. We're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come see us at 746 Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. It's a convenience store with a whole lot more. Stop by Spencer Cash Saver to check out our fresh produce, quality meats, and our new grab-and-go deli sliced meats and cheeses. New two-week ads start every other Thursday with the best prices for your budget. Save money and shop local at Spencer Cash Saver. Very nice little can all conference battle here tonight early in the season. Roan County and Braxton County, the Lady Raiders, by six entering the fourth. Yeah, Roan County won that quarter 10-8 to eight on the scoreboard. Rebounding, a bit of an issue. Bra um, Braxton County has really started to own the middle 10 to 4 in that quarter alone, extending the lead out 26 to 20 in the rebounds for the Eagles. Braxton with possession to begin the final quarter. Nicholson with a step back, she'll fire a three. That one airballed short. Mason, great rebounding position. Hope going to bring it herself. She's got wheels, puts the brakes on. Now Tolly, the baseline runner, may have been partially blocked. Eagles with the rebounds. And Lunsford will slow the pace. Bow out top or pass out top. Whistle. We got ball, jump ball, and that's going to be Roan County basketball. That was chaos personified for a second. Almost got a walk on Lunsford, and then the ball was tipped by Harlan. Kaiser had the loose ball. It was tied up. Possession arrow favoring Roan County. Tolly, she's got the handles, drives, dishes Ooh. into the corner, and overshoots Mason. Hope was open on the Polka Valley bank sign in the left corner. I think Hope was starting to make her way down to the basket. She's been hitting the boards very hard, seven in the ball game. Should have just drifted and stayed out there on that corner. You can see that's what Coach Shandy White was telling her. You know, you, you've already got the penetration. You don't need to go crashing down into the lane. Stay out here and give your, uh, give your ball handler somewhere to go with that basketball. Harlan wreaking havoc again out top. Lunsford attacks down the lane, left side, throws it up. That hits out of bounds. Lunsford frustrated. That was just good defense by Roan County. Uh, moved their feet, kept their hands straight up, and just made uh, gave Lunsford no angle to go with that ball. Bo still in the backcourt. Harlan lobs it out top. Roan County breaks the pressure. A beautiful pass, but a great defensive play by Abraham. She recovered, and it was a wide open look for Hope Mason before it wasn't. Yeah, just a great recognition on the backside. Beautiful setup from Tolly. 
found Mason, but an even better defensive play there by Abraham. Nicholson in the backcourt, got a screen set, breaks the pressure with the dribble. Driving now, and that's another great deflection on a coverage as Bo was getting back defensively, and that's going to force Coach Lunsford for Braxton County to burn a timeout. Six and a half left in the game. Roan County leading by six. This is Dan from d, &D Motors. And Donna from d, d Customer Care. We would like to take a moment to thank all of our customers for their support. And wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous Happy New Year. A duo that's perfect together. That's Dave's Plumbing and Heating and Linux. Dave's Plumbing and Heating is your local Linux dealer, and we're committed to making your family's home comfort our top priority. With a wide assortment of Linux products to offer, Dave's Plumbing and Heating will ensure your home's air is perfect for your family. Call us today at 304-823-3479 or visit us online at davesplumbingheating.com to learn more about how you can experience the expert service and care offered by Dave's Plumbing and Heating. Give a license, West Virginia, 043-565. Well, this is the style of play that Coach Shandy White likes. She said aggressive defense. We're going to press throughout the year. And when the offense isn't working with shots, we're still going to create offensive opportunities. Matt, that's what the Saron County team is doing, and they're in a dogfight here. Yeah, I think even in the half-court sets, they're doing a much better job. They're more settled with the basketball. Understanding and knowing where each other are on the court. Uh, Roan County, through three quarters, had seven assists on field goals made, so just doing a really good job of moving the ball around and, and playing much more settled and playing very controlled but aggressive defense. Six and a half minutes left, another... Ball knocked out of bounds, and that's going to be a reach foul called. We're going to get Tolly just her third now. She's been perfect on the season. Fouled out in that Charleston Catholic game as well. Also fouled out in the first game of the season. Well, the game we saw right here last week against Work County, so she's that will a, lead. She's a bulldog. What do you expect? <laughs> that will lead to a couple of free throws. For Nicholson, Paxton Conley we haven't seen for a bit. She had three fouls early in this second half. She'll replace Kane with 6.28 remaining. Neither team has scored so far in the fourth and still haven't, though, the rebound on the miss. Abraham, the shot is good, and a foul on a reach coming as well. That is just the height of Abraham. She kept it up in the air, Matt. And put it back up and in. That foul's going to go against Kaiser, her second. But yeah, just a really nice job from Abraham. Never brought that ball down underneath of her head. Maybe needs to work on the free throw shooting a little bit. Airballed right. that one. Possession error, Roan County, but the pressure coming for Braxton. Let's see if Roan County can handle it down the stretch. 6.20 left in the game. And uh, now Lunsford's going to be whistled for a reach. That's one of those things, Matt, if you reach with the correct hand, it doesn't look so bad. She wrote, she was reaching across the body, though. Yeah, the play was moving to the left, so you need to try to move your feet, slide to the right, just reaching across to her own body, trying to make contact. That's going to award you a foul every time. Bo attacking the rim, layup no good, rebound Harlan. And now Piper tripped. Unfortunately, Conley was the one that was there. That is just an accidental foul on Conley. Uh, no intent there, just uh, the feet getting tangled up, and you know, you've know you got to kind of make a call there. Uh, that's unfortunate for Conley. That's going to be her fourth foul. Inbounds, baseline right, 6.08 left. Bo gets it. Here's Harlan, shot blocked out top, and a foul coming. That was a late foul call. Lunsford disagrees. And Piper Harlan is headed to the foul line, and she will shoot three. That's tough. That was a pretty good close out there for Lunsford. And like you said, a bit of a late whistle. It looked like a pretty good defensive play out there on the perimeter, but fortunate for Roan County, you get a shot here at the line. Harlan missing the first, two more to go. Lunsford hoping for misses. Roan County hoping for a couple of makes. Harlan rolls the second one around and drops it through. It's good officiating there as well. They're going down 
Lunsford very upset about that call. The official that made it went and explained to her why she made that call. Very nice. Third for Harlan, good. Two of three. That's where Roan County has made their hay here. Harlan and her teammate get tied up. Here's a three put up. Off the rim for Lunsford. Rebound. Mason jump ball. Staying with Braxton County. That's important because Roan County now will have the next tie up. 557 left. Abraham checking out. Roan County leading by six. If you're going to give Abraham just a quick breather, try to get her ready for this final push. Steal underneath, Roan County, Tolly attacking against Conley. That's number five, body contact. Conley's just got to peel off there, Matt. She stayed with it and just got the body, and that's going to be foul number five. Frustrated, I know, but in that situation, Matt, you just have to let Tolly take it. Yeah, I mean, and you can challenge that one a little bit and just kind of flash in front, but just riding the hip like that, that's tough, especially, again, the size difference. If Tolly goes up into you and she's go that's going to look way more dramatic than what the foul actually was. Great play, though, for Tolly. Unfortunate for Conley. She's going to be down for the rest of this ball game. And Tolly continues the torrid shooting pace at the line for Roan County. They have made their hay at the line tonight. 33-26 with 5.49 remaining. Tolly hits both the lead back to eight. Pressure in the backcourt. We'll see if Roan County can cause some problems. Nicholson pumps, drives, lane, jumper, rolls off the rim, rebound underneath. That is Mason pulling out a big defensive board. Harlan into the front court. Piper now slowing it down. Wide open, she'll pull the trigger on a three. Rebound on the floor, and last touched out of bounds by, ooh, that was close, by uh, oh, that was Braxton? Lunsford. Yeah, it was Lunsford. They're going to get, it was on the ground and off somebody's leg. Hard to tell from this angle, her and Mason both going after that one. Inbounds, Roan Kenny will bring it out top with Tolly. 520 left. Tolly moving back and forth, looking for a screen. Roan County. Has the possession, and yeah, I was getting ready to say you can burn a little clock here if you'd like. Instead, they don't. Now Harlan playing safety, almost steals it. Roan County runs into each other again, and now Mason slides Ooh. sideways. That X last yep. little bit of a slide. She had the right angle, had the right position, just moved her feet a tiny little bit right there at the end, or that would have been a very good defensive play. Had Mason stayed put, that would have been a miss and an opportunity. Instead, just a little movement right at the end. Free throw hits the back of the rim, hits the front, and drops in for Nicholson. Five minutes remaining. Proud in a frenzy right now. Second one pops out, rebound, Kaiser, ball on the ground, and I mentioned it, Matt. That is why those jump ball possessions are so important. Roe Kenny gets one there. A tough break there, Kaiser, a good rebound, just brought the ball down a little bit too low, allowed for the tie-up, but it stays Roan County's possession. Pressure in the backcourt, Tolly with a nice play, but she's going to step on the sideline. Just barely trying to tiptoe down the line. Trying to get that across half court and get the offense set. Still 450 left to go here in the ball game. Durham County 34, Braxton County 27. Pressure on the inbounds. They'll get it back to Nicholson attacking. Nicholson in the paint, drip, hands it off to Kane. Whistle and a little hack coming down for Mason. And now how many is that on Hope? That's going to be four now on Mason. And immediately, Coach Shandy White reacts. Joplin Harlan comes to the scorer's table, you would imagine, coming in for Mason. Free throws coming for Kane. Misses the first. Mason will check out. Four minutes, 43 seconds left. Some good minutes for Mason, though. She had nine rebounds in this ballgame. Second free throw for Kane. One of two, the lead back down to two possessions at six. Bo, she can run the baseline. Here's an inbound. Joplin to Piper on the run. Piper 
Now slows it back down, boy. Braxton gets away with a reach foul. Roan County can run a little clock here. They don't have to be crazy. They just have to be very good with the basketball. Bo out top, drives, the runner in the paint, back rim, rebound tipped on the ground. We've got a jump ball. This time it will be Braxton County possession. That was a good move out on the top there by Bo, a little head fake. Got two defenders going in the wrong direction. That's a good looking shot to take in that situation, about 14 feet or so from the basket. Four minutes and 15 seconds left. Close one here between two LKC East opponents. Nicholson wanted to drive, cut off, backs up, fires a deep three, rims out. Backside rebound on the ground, picked up by Pritt. Out to Nicholson, deep two, that one swifts. The lead for Roan County down to four, and now Roan County didn't see Pritt. Pritt behind the play, steals it away, and now Roan County will foul. Harlan was alone in the backcourt and forgot that Pritt was back there. Well, she was alone back there with three Braxton County defenders. Two were fronting her and just lost track of Pritt. That was a good defensive recovery there by Harlan just that last minute with that little reach is what got her called for that foul. Free throw good. We're down to a one possession lead for Roan County. And before the second comes, Coach Sandy White wants to talk it over. 3.42 left. We got a great one coming down the stretch here. This is Lady Raider volleyball and softball player Mahaley Nicholson for Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Since 2016, ECI has provided West Virginia with top-notch service for both home and commercial needs. We pride ourselves on working closely with our clients to ensure that projects are completed in a timely manner, that customer expectations are met, or in many cases exceeded. Regardless of the job size, we have solutions for everyone. We specialize in septic systems, brush removal, dirt work, asbestos removal, and more. Check us out on the web at www.ecivv.net or contact us for a quote at 304-532-7653. Fax number 304-532-7653. Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Ed Nicholson, owner, West Virginia Contractors License, 055775. I think a good timeout by Coach Shandy White. Uh, down the stretch of this ball game, both teams are going to play tight defense and press. So it's almost a mental battle here in the final 342. And the uh, the final minutes minutes of this game, the strategy with foul situation will be non-existent. Rome County with five in the quarter, four now for Braxton County. So either team, as they move forward, will be shooting two free throws. Second one coming for the sophomore, Bailey Pritt. And that one rims out. Rebound, though, comes down to Braxton. We got a jump ball situation. Abraham couldn't do anything about that. The ball got away from her. She trapped it on her neck and bow very quickly to tie the possession. Yeah, I was trying to keep that one above her head. Just, let's say, just lost control a little bit. Heads up play there for Rome County. Now, can they handle the pressure in the backcourt? Bo bounces it in, gets it right back. Looks opposite, that's how you break the pressure. Roan County can slow it down if they want. Kaiser won't, she'll fire the jumper and hit. She had missed a couple earlier, but makes a big one. Now Harlan and Neal near steal. Boy, Piper just all over the place defensively, another deflection. Yeah, it was a good confident shot there from Sammy Kaiser. That's her spot. You know, that 14 to 16 foot jumper or something she's worked on a ton. And uh, just a, a great, confident step-in jumper extending this lead for Roan County out to five. We are nearing the three-minute mark. And stands are loud on both sides. Out top, boy, got away with a maybe an offensive foul there, Abraham. Here is Lunsford from deep. It's good. Rolled off the screen and drilled a three. Couple of big time shots in this second quarter or second half by Lunsford. Now Tolly a beautiful dish. Kaiser takes it strong to the basket, draws the contact. Lunsford has hit a couple of big threes in the fourth. That one cut it down to two with 248 left, but Kaiser off a great dish. Now Tolly just doing a really good job of running this offense, setting up her teammates. 
Kaiser strong to the basket, draws the foul. Can't convert on the first. Let's see if she can knock down the second one. Very important second free throw, trying to make it a three-point lead. And she will. Big bus back at basket for the Lady Raiders. Pressure in the backcourt. Here comes a four-point heave now. Nicholson tracks it down. Baseline, she'll pull up. Jumper, missed. Rebound, Pritt. Now the ball loose. It's on the ground. Picked up. Three on the left wing. No good. Rebound on the floor. Picked up. No good. Rebound. We've got a possession tie-up between Tolly and Abraham. And the possession arrow favors Braxton County. It will be a Lady Eagle basketball. Riley Rhodes checking in the freshman for Sammy Kaiser. 2.23 left. Lob pass inbounds. Lost and stolen. Here comes Tolly. Tolly. To the lane, the layup, no good, rebound, put back, no good, rebound, on the ground. Whistle, and what do we have here? Do we have a turnover? We do. We have a Braxton County travel as they were on top of each other and rolled away with that one. Or did we get a jump ball? Official's going to check this out. One, I think, called a travel. Nope, the official said jump ball. And they're going to get together and double check. If it's a jump ball, it should be Roan County possession. And what is the call? Um, Braxton County's ball, apparently. The only thing I can think is they called a Raider player out of bounds when they touched it. Here comes the full court heave again. Nicholson on the run. The layup is good. Rose County gets beat deep. The lead is down to one point. Mason out top with 2.05 left. Bo picks up the dribble out top to Hope Mason. Mason got to get a guard to come near here. Bow out top again, pumps and drives. Slows it down wisely. Roan County leads by one. Pass to Mason, she's gonna look to attack. Left side, layup is good. A big take by Mason. Lead is out to three with 135 left. You know, both teams just really playing high level basketball down the stretch. Neither team wanting to concede. Hope Mason, what a beautiful drive to the bucket. Nicholson wasn't ready for the pass. It gets away. Stolen by Reed, the freshman, or by Rhodes, sorry. Harlan with 120 left. Low County needs to hold up here a little bit. Bo, and Roan County's going to call a timeout. Coach White wants to double check with her team, saying, hey, the possession is ours. The lead is three. The time is 110. We have got to be very, very careful and with that with the possession, basketball right there Bo had gotten trouble out top picked up the ball and coach white could see no one was really reacting you got to make sure that keep your eyes out front if that guard picks the ball up somebody's got to come and help you've got to call it out you've got to know who's coming from what angle so that's what we're checking on right now make sure that everyone knows the responsibilities here of keeping a hold of this basketball. I was looking at the scores table. They did call that a jump ball. The possession arrows showed Braxton for some reason. So now it shows Roan County, and that's huge. So Roan County able to manage that, have possession, and they've got the jump ball possession with 110 left. So if you do get a tie up, it's your basketball right now. 110 left. Yeah, that's very crucial point, Drew, with the possession changes you know you see that so many times those tie up possessions it will remain roan county's ball quarter court inbound for braylon bow you got to secure the inbounds first bow lobs it in on the sideline no need to hurry inside kaiser a high side layup is good she sealed off her defender on the low side and laid it in 
Kaiser with two big baskets late. Really good body control in the post for Sammy Kaiser. Five point lead with 50 seconds left. Nicholson driving, cut off on the baseline, backs up, misses the shot, rebound. Mason, Hope can slow it down if she wants. She'll attack, gets across the timeline. Hope going all the way down. Kaiser now brings it out to the wing and draws the foul. 34 on the clock. Mason did a big job there getting the rebound and then getting across the timeline first, Matt. And then realizing, hey, we just need to slow everything back down. Well, that was good recognition there by Kaiser. As soon as she got that ball in her hands, maybe had an open jumper, but brought it back out, forced the foul. Throw this game down and knocks down a big one at the line. Two, again, big layups for Sammy Kaiser down the stretch, and now a big th free throw. I cannot wait to see Roan County's free throw shooting at the end of this game. It has been stellar, and it has kept them on top. They trailed four to nothing and have not trailed since. Kaiser, two of two. The lead is seven with 30 seconds left. Time out on the floor of Raxford County. We will take it with them. Roan County leads. Whether you are new to the world or you've reached your golden years, Rome County Family Healthcare is here to serve you. Hello, I'm Dr. Maria Kessel, inviting you to make an appointment at Rome County Family Healthcare. With 20 years of experience practicing medicine in our community, I made the decision to partner with Rome County Family Healthcare. I am confident that together, we put the health of you and your family as our first priority. Rome County Family Healthcare is passionate about serving the families in our community. Please call 304-927-1495 for all of your common care needs. Rome County Family Healthcare, health and wellness for the whole family. We've got a barn burner down the stretch, Rome County with some big plays late. And they have the lead with 30.5, 43-36. Inbounds quarter court in front of the Braxton bench for the Lady Eagles. Has some big plays offensively down the stretch for Rome County. Let's see. The defense can hold tight. Oh, man, a foul on a shove by Harlan right off the bat. And that's going to be free throws for Braxton. One of the last things you want to do is foul immediately if you're Rome County. The other thing would be not give up a wide open three. Well, Harlan's seen Lunsford be able to hit off the screen. They're just trying to trail that one and uh, make, uh, make it a tough look for Lunsford. Just got a little bit too quick. A rare miss followed by another. And now Mason with the rebound and immediate foul for the Eagles. They just have to do it quickly. Lunsford, boy, I tell you, she has been great from the line, Matt. She obviously can shoot the ball well. We saw that with a couple of threes here in the fourth. And she's made some free throws tonight, but she misses both. And it's a bit unusual with the free throw line to just take that ball and shoot it so quickly. I, maybe you want to take a, a at least a dribble there and, and just kind of calm yourself. Quick foul by Nicholson, Mason. At Rome County side, misses the first of two, but 24.5 on the clock. Rome County leads 43 to 36. Mason trying to make it eight. Shot good, one of two. And Rome County is going to play some soft pressure, try to run a little clock. Lunsford, Nicholson out top. Gotta get to screen. She'll try to, I thought she was gonna fire. She does it, throws it, it's a gone. Take it away, here comes Mason, down the lane. Play it good with five on the clock and that will be the nail in the coffin. Three, two, one, and Old County's gonna win it. It was defense that began Old County's run in the first and it's defense at the end that seals the deal, Hope Mason with the steal and the coast-to-coast -coast layup, and Roan County secures win number one of 2023. Your final score, 46 to 36. Break to take. We'll come back, recap the ball game, have your statistics, 
and your Willard Sea Starch Auto Parts player of the game after these messages. Go ahead, car. Make my day. Do you have one of those intermittent electrical problems that no one can find? Let Groves Auto Service in Arnoldsburg, West Virginia, diagnose and fix that pesky problem for you. Call Groves Auto Service for an appointment today, and we will get to the bottom of it. Call 304-655-6765. Groves Auto Service, and don't forget to check out our Facebook page. Hi folks, here at Hardman's, we are a full-service building material and hardware store. We have it all, from nuts and bolts, to plumbing, electrical, best look paint, lumber, drywall, furniture, appliances, flooring, and kitchen and bath. Our best look paint is a sure win to brighten up your interior walls or spruce up your exterior. We don't just sell the products, but we deliver and install many of them as well. All of our installers are trained and certified. On top of all that, we know a little something about customer service. We'll greet you with a smile and have the knowledge to help you get the job done right. Stop in and let's tackle your next project together. Hardments, our family serving yours since 1907. Builder Supply on Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer is the place to shop for the best selection of cold weather gear. We have a wide selection of boots including Rocky, Wolverine, and door to boots, steel-toed and non-steel-toed as low as $78. Carhartt bibs in most sizes starting at just $90 and many different styles of sweatshirts starting at only $40. Visit us on the web at hildersupply.com, check out our Facebook page at Hildreth Oil Field Supply, or stop by and see us at the store located on Route 33 in Spencer. Hilder Supply, a hometown store store with hometown ownership and proud supporter of all Roan County athletes. Hi, this is Lisa Simmons inviting you to shop local and come see me at our fully stocked warehouse on a spread sport. We're located at 373 East Main Street, Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. At Honest Spread, you'll find the latest trends in floor coverings, carpet, vinyl, tile, hardwood, and the very popular luxury vinyl floor. We install everything we sell with the best customer service in town. Financing available, so call me today at 304-927-8082 or check us out on the web. Take a small drive to Big Savings. <laughs> Well, your Roan County Lady Raiders will be home all week this week. Three games, and what a way to get the week started for Coach Shandy White and the Lady Raiders, their first victory of the season. And it was a very fun game to watch, much like the battle on last Wednesday, the opening game of the season right here against Work County, another LKC opponent. Tonight it was Braxton County. And this was a fun, fun battle back and forth. I love good defense. And that's what both teams played here tonight. Both teams very stingy. Both teams pressing well, causing commotion, causing problems. Roan County, though, just a gritty performance down the stretch after it was a one-point lead at 37 to 36, Roan County reeled off the last nine points, including a couple of big layups by Sammy Kaiser and a big play right at the end on a steal and a coast-to-coast -coast layup by Hope Mason. That is just a small sliver of what happened here tonight. It started out very quickly for Braxton County as the Lady Eagles within the first minute took a 4-0 lead. Roan County, though, hit a 10-0 run and then never looked back. They led by as many as 13 points tonight. In the first quarter, they led by 10 at one point. They led 14 to 6 after 1, but a gr very good uh, second quarter for Braxton County cut that halftime deficit down to 30 to 26. In the third quarter, Roan County extended the lead back out, but in the fourth, again, Braxton made a run, and again, as we mentioned, late in the ball game, with about three minutes left in the game, Braxton had cut the deficit down to just one, a couple of big threes by Adrian Lunsford on that run. But then Roan County just really made the plays, I think, Matt White, down the stretch that they needed to make. And uh, they made them big, and they made them count at the end. Yeah, they made some very, uh, very veteran-like moves, did a really good job of maintaining possessions, uh, didn't give up a ton in the, uh, you know, in, in steals. Uh, did a really good job of, of ball control. 15 to 11, Roan County wins the steals margin. Uh, 9 to 4 in assist. I thought they moved the ball very well offensively and were getting 
baskets going, uh, you know, shots going to the basket with your momentum, forcing the action on Braxton County. Uh, a ton of points from the free throw line. Hope to figure those up here in just a second, but uh, just a really good overall game. Uh, we knew that coming into this season, there was a lot of winnable games early in this year. And with a young team, a brand new coach, you have to get number one under your belt and winning just breeds more and more confidence as you uh, as you get into the season. I'll run through the stats here real quick, and then we'll get Coach White's view on everything. Uh, for Roan County, Anna Tolley, 13 points, four rebounds. She had four steals and three assists. You had Piper Harlan with 11 points, four rebounds. She had five steals, three assists, and a blocked shot. Sammy Kaiser, another really good contribution to this uh, team as a senior leadership uh, 10 points six rebounds she had four blocked shots and two steals was really good defensively underneath hope mason with seven points 11 rebounds two steals and an assist and you had braylon bow with three points a rebound two assists and one steal and kate mullen with two points Ella Keen with a rebound and Riley Rhodes with a rebound and a steal round out for Roan County. For Braxton County, it was Adrian Lunsford with 12 points, five rebounds, two steals, a block, and an assist. Erica Nicholson with nine points, five steals, and two blocked shots. The rest of the way for the Lady Eagles, it was Skyland Abraham with five points, 10 rebounds, two blocks, and a steal. Bailey Pritt with five points. Six rebounds, two steals, and one assist. Lauren Kane with a point and five rebounds. Paxton Conley with two points, two rebounds. And Lila Fitzwater with two points and five rebounds. Added up 46 36. Your Lady Raiders get the victory. Well, Matt White, I'm going to have you check out the actual free throw statistics. I'm betting, I'm going to bet that nearly half of the points came from the free throw line. I know we had 10 of 20 at one point. It was 20 of the 46 points. Close. Almost. Very, very close. We're very happy to be joined up here at our table by Coach Shandy White. Well, win number one. You're a smiler right now. <laughs> Feels good to win your first game as a head coach um, at the varsity level. I tell you, Coach, I, I mentioned this midway, I think, through the third quarter. They had called a timeout, and you guys had just made another big defensive play. And I said, boy, you could not draw up your style better this game. You held Braxton County to 36 points. That's huge. You know, I challenged them before the game. I said, hey, we got we to gotta hold them to under 40. Uh, we hold them under 40, and everybody that's a starter gives me 6 to 10 points. We're going to win this ball game. And <clears throat> we came out with, with that intensity. Um, I thought our defensive pressure was great. I mean, we got we got beat a couple times. It's going to happen. We're young. and uh, But overall, less fouls, stayed in the game, did what we had to do, and finished it. And that's the most important part. That's one of the, one of the things that we talk about a lot is controlled aggression on defense. Mm -hmm. And you want to be aggressive and, and, but not commit silly fouls. Yep. And that was a – a huge, huge deal going down the stretch at one point, I think, in the early part of the third quarter. We only had five team fouls. Mm -hmm. Before Piper, Piper's last one notwithstanding. <laughs> yeah. That, she looked at me and was like, what? I mean, I didn't even, yeah, no. You know, when I have, when I have Anna, when I have Piper, I mean, pressuring the ball. I mean, they're so quick. Yes. And when they don't pick up those fouls, people can't handle it. Yep. I tell them, hey, you don't even have to reach. Guess what? The pressure alone will turn the ball over. And we, I thought we did a phenomenal job tonight just managing our, our hands on defense, yep. which was the biggest part of the difference between last Wednesday and tonight. If you, you mentioned you got beat a couple of times. If you averaged the ratio out of how many times you either stole, deflected, or kept them in front of you versus the couple of times they threw it deep, it would be a massive ratio. I thought the girls moved so well defensively. The, 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 the free throw line was huge. You guys hit your free throws here tonight. On top of that, you got to be feeling pretty good and very confident because Braxton County kept coming in waves. They got it down to one. With about three minutes left, your girls didn't panic. They didn't freak out. They And, again, they applied a lot of good pressure as well, 
and I thought your girls were able to get it down the court and then remind themselves, okay, we're across timeline. We don't need to do anything crazy. Well, that's why I called a couple of those timeouts toward the end. I mean, I'd already called one to say, hey, look, we don't got to score right now, ladies. Hey, we got to run some time off this clock. Plus, it's going to give us a little breather. We can't, you know, be reserved to the point where we're, you know, not taking care of the basketball, but we got a passing cut, yep. passing cut. And I thought we did a, a really good job with making sure that no matter what they brought and kept coming and kept coming, we still stood our ground and did what we had to do. I mean, I'm proud of them. Like we said, they're young. Yep. I mean, this this whole total group has never played before in this group. Yeah. Okay? And uh, they're, they've always had somebody potentially to look for to score the basketball. Nope, it's you tonight. It's all them. It's you tonight. And you know what? I challenged them. I said, hey, we have got to get downhill. We have got to force it, you know, into the paint. And we got to draw the foul. We have to get people in foul trouble. We can't be the one in foul trouble. We got to get them in foul trouble. Yep. And I thought we did a phenomenal job at that, getting to the line tonight and uh, and making them. Well, Coach, uh, win number one's got to feel good. You got a busy week all at home. And so hopefully this first victory for these girls and for you, hopefully this is a springboard for a very good week here at the Castle. Absolutely. And I just want to give a huge shout out to this crowd. Wow. I have never... You know, I'm not going to say never, but it's been a long time since we've had this presence in this building. And, I mean, it was phenomenal. So I want to shout out Raider Nation for coming out, cheering these girls on, and, and really being present tonight. We appreciate you. Absolutely. It was a fantastic and loud crowd. Coach uh, Shady White, congratulations on win number one. We'll see you again tomorrow night. All right. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Head Coach Shady White, Roan Kenny wins at 46-36. One more final break to take for Willard C. Starcher out of parts. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up with our player of the game award after these messages it's cold outside better check that propane tank star well behind spencer middle school will fill your tank when you bring it in star well also checks your tank for safety to see if it's damaged or dangerous in any way don't trade for someone else's grungy tank we fill yours safety seven days a week and service Shop Star Weld for propane, welding gases, and supplies. Let Star Weld fire you up. Behind Spencer Middle School, dial 927 2520 or stop today. Back inside the castle, final score tonight on this Monday. First of three games at the castle for the Lady Raiders. They are victorious 46 to 36. First win of the season, first win in the coaching career of Chandy White over Braxton County. Time now for Matt White to distribute our Willard C. Starcher Auto Parts Player of the Game Award. Yeah, they just, uh, when it's so balanced like this, it makes it really tough. Uh, Anna Tolley played a phenomenal game from start to finish, you know, both offensively and defensively, and ran this offense very well. 13 points, four rebounds, four steals, and three assists. Either one of those seniors you could go with as well between Harlan and Kaiser. Um, it's tough. It really <laughs> is. Uh, you know, but I thought Piper played the, the guard play was very crucial yeah. in making Braxton County make some mistakes. So, uh, you know, Tolly and Harlan combined 24 points. They had nine rebounds, six assists, and nine steals out top on pressure defense and neither got in foul trouble so that's going to be my willard c starcher auto parts players of the game anatoly and piper harlan congratulations to those young ladies we're going to turn right around tomorrow night we'll do it again again folks varsity only tomorrow night roan county's lady raiders will be hosting webster county it is a 7 p.m scheduled start will be on the air with pregame coverage at about 6 50 p.m. Final score, 46-36, Roan County victorious. Appreciate you all joining us on our Facebook and YouTube platforms. For all of us here at WVRC, Katie White, our camera person, Matt White, my color commentator and statistician, 